Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a raid complete, a saga session. I was lucky enough to be helped by the moderators of the tribes of Midgard Discord. Big shout out to everyone. Krim Soko, Shrimp, Death Paladin, Guiji, Ansias, Freaky Neo and Scuba Steve. They guided me through a few stages. I'd played quite a bit on my own already in solo, but this was a different experience playing it with other people. It is the best way to play. Honestly, try and play as much as you can with other players. Even if it's complete randoms in just matchmaking or try and get some friends to play, you'll unlock and be able to achieve so much more, especially if you're trying hard to get some of the classes. It's also quite hard. It's actually much more of a challenge with more players. The scaling obviously increases the more people you have involved, and so it does become even super harder, and the mods assure me that it's actually easier to play solo or much smaller groups sometimes. So we had about eight of us playing in this game mode. So again, big shout out to them. Hope you liked the video. I'm gonna take you through pretty much the key stages you need to know about. Each one of these usually takes around two and a half hours. And do leave a like, it really does help me out as we spawn in to our village. So day one, as usual, go and gather resources. Don't have to mince around together, just run about, chopping trees, gathering flint, picking up rocks, getting as much contributions as you can to your settlement. A few key things to note, when you gain experience from doing certain things, it gets shared with everyone. So if you come across a particular chest that's got loot, everyone will be able to open up that chest and get some loot from it when you defeat a giant everyone gets a share of the experience when you complete an in-game event everyone gets a share of that experience you don't share experience when you're killing just random creatures or enemies nor do you share an experience when you gather resources the resources are all shared in a communal chest if you want it to be that way you can pop it inside so you can help each other out dump some of your stuff and you can go ahead and craft and upgrade all of the npcs available and it becomes much much easier you just got to be a bit careful that someone's maybe not getting a bit too excited and making all the weapons and armors just to try them out back at camp we're making up some basics gear i'm not going too mad at the moment you can see and then it's time to start looking at the events or the quests. So events happen randomly, quests are pinned, and these are personal quests where you need to get some of these fragments. You can see the reward is quest fragments. You need these to open up the portal to take on the final raid boss. So we'll come back to that in a bit later, but going up to a camp, taking on a witch and some of these creatures and enemies is a lot tougher, like I said. They've got more health pools normally, and they do do a bit more damage. But it's always good to have a little bit of help from some friends, making light work of a lot of the smaller mobs and creatures. As I said, once we've defeated this, that chest gets loot for everyone that just happens to be there. You do have to come and actually collect the loot yourself. It doesn't magically just appear in your inventory, so every player has to come over, and that's really good. It's one of the main reasons to clear in that camp is hopefully to find maybe a rare or a really, really special loot chest. You can see I'm going to get a bunch of XP opening up this chest, but we also got a ton collectively for someone activating one of the shrines. Now, they're the fast travel points that get you across the map. So back to the tree life, just making sure it's topped up enough. I think we kept it above sort of six or 7,000 at pretty much all times. And by now we're already starting to upgrade some of this stuff, all contributing our supplies and pretty much getting all the stuff we need. And this is one of our first healthing fights. All in all, not bad for first day's work. I've already got a decent set of armor, decent set of tools. And yeah, we're gaining levels rapidly. I'm like level three already. I am the warrior class in this one. It was the first time I got the chance to actually play with warrior class properly. I do feel sorry for these little Orionoko little wannabes. That's what they remind me of from He-Man. You've got to be really dog shit old to remember that reference. Or maybe you've been watching it on Netflix and you're super, super sad that He-Man gets the chop. Oh, <gasps> spoilers. Uh, yeah, we're defending it. You could put some money into the defences and that's going to happen soon. But a key tip that the boys told me about was when you're building your defences, be careful because if they get broken, you have to spend a lot more to build new ones. So at some point, you might as well open the gates and let the enemies in rather than let them destroy your defences. You saw me picking up an NPC there as well. That's one way to also get some extra loot. I do believe you also get a reward for picking up a friend as well or a teammate. As we begin day two, number top tip, make sure that you're deciding if it's right to either repair your stuff using souls if you've got an abundance of them, or go ahead and just craft new weapons and stuff. You will find the durability on your weapons goes down pretty quick, and if you've got lots of resources, it's just quicker and easier to craft a lot of the weapons. I find especially solo, 
in the early stages, it's much easier to do so. Some of the weapons obviously require much better resources, so you won't always be able to make a new one. But again, repairing it does cost quite a bit of your souls. Here's the communal chest, me just dumping off a bunch of stuff that I had in my inventory and making sure that everyone has access to it. The key one that you want to upgrade from the NPCs in your encampment is the Tinkerer as she's going to pretty much give you the ability to craft cut stone and make raw iron and that's how you upgrade a lot of the other fixtures and farms around your area. I also chose my class properly so here's the warrior just going through a bunch of the stuff. It is pretty much a good sort of magical ice damage effect character or flames depending on what you want. I'll go over the characters a little bit more uh, classes in a separate video though. But top tip number three, you can only get to level 10 in your character when you're playing in one of these sessions. So it pretty much means you can only upgrade 10 of them points. The boys and girls needed some help, so I ran over to the Linorm, this lizardy, dragony sort of mad creature. We took care of that pretty easily, but they are pretty ferocious, usually, if you face them alone. Especially you need quite a lot of the Linorm teeth, I think it is, to craft and make some high-end gear weapons. So right now we are in the land of pools biome, so you can see it's all a bit boggy, a bit swampy. So you expect to come across all sorts of creatures like snakes as well, and still more bandits as well as these little goblins. They're pretty annoying, they're not really OP, but they definitely need to be taken out as they're surprisingly, they can gang up on you and they're pretty fast and nimble. We ran into another Linorm and this one was a bit more problematic. You can see as well using some of these explosive containers to take out enemies where you can as well when you hit them. And this one's chasing away at one of the moderators. So yeah, the enemies do kind of switch up a little bit. Obviously it's focusing on me and focusing back. So I kind of like the AI. I feel like it wasn't being easy manipulated too much. The giants are a bit different story. I'll talk about that in a minute when we get to it. But yeah, the smaller creatures, no problem with three of us. And it's time to get our hands, a grubby little swampy dirty hands, on some more loot. Woohoo! You do get a collection of stuff. Arrows, jars, traps, as well as building pieces sometimes too. As well as potions and other items. Other plants that you can also get here are henblane extract as well. I ain't gonna lie, I can't remember what that unlocks or does. But it is something that is pretty rare or, you know, you have to really come to this biome to get hold of. Again, the mushroom oil as well is the only other item as well that you need to come here specifically to go and get. So go on, my werewolf, this guy was a bit tougher than maybe I anticipated. He nearly got me, but I eventually I took him down. You get three different levels of these guys, so the third level is super tough. And you'll see that I end up getting owned. It was back to the encampment quick as the hell things were on their way as the end of night to draw close. And you can see my level is still at level 3 but I'm really close to breaking that level 4. The first two nights normally you can leave it alone when you're playing solo or survival. But the boys did tell me that literally it's very tough to just leave it unattended. So you will have to come and regularly protect. So if you can communicate to a group you're in, making sure that a couple of you will always come back and defend, you should be okay. Quick show you of voice lines as well as emotes. You can use them if you're playing on PlayStation. I do believe there's no chat box. So they're going to be an optimum tool to use to try and guide people to go and get certain stuff. And then I upgraded my warrior a little bit more. You can see the XP is just going through the roof as people find more fast travel stations or we upgrade some of our NPCs. So to upgrade them, you do need souls. You need to press the upgrade button, feed them souls, and then you could go ahead and buy all sorts of crazy new items, tools, weapons. Some of the stuff at the end, legendary items, they need some of the golden horns to actually craft and make. I didn't get to that stage, but I did, or I was lucky enough to craft some really rare stuff and some epic items too, and that helped me again unlock some more rewards from the challenge section. Highly recommend doing this, you don't always have to also craft it, you can go ahead and buy items. I'll show you that a little bit later on, but you can see I've got one of the achievements. So make sure you do that in a group as well, or when you first do some of your sessions, just to make sure you get as many rewards as possible. When you're crafting higher end tools, it just simply means it's got more durability. It's kind of a little bit weak. I kind of wish they would give you some more resources. I think that would be better since you do have to spend quite a lot of stuff on it. I mean, it's still fairly basic other than maybe the golden horn for that end one. Not much happened on day three. I just went around gathering more resources and encountering some more little bandits or duck or far as well as just contributing more to the cause. Just cleared out another one of these encampments again to get some extra loot. The hell things were on their way and I have to say the boys had it in hand so it didn't run back. I just carried on doing what I was doing. Day 4 begins. 
So here's a couple Dwarven traders and you can sell items to them to get souls. So if you've got a bunch of stuff you really don't need, make sure you go and get some more souls from these guys. You'll also find traders that will sell you stuff and a sorcerer trader too. So they're pretty scattered around, there's all the different varieties. So definitely make sure you scout around and get used to what they're selling. Right now my character's level 5 and I'm really starting to get grips with stuff. Getting either ma increase in mana so I can really use more of my special abilities. And I got a chance to explore the Ash Beach areas and pick up some new resources like seaweed here. You'll also find things like amethyst and I think a blue crystal. I can't remember which one it was. You'll also find plenty of crabs to kill here too. And plenty of unsunken. Now these can be pretty tough. I decided that uh, maybe running away was the best course of action. A quick pause, looking at the map, you see the progress that's being made. Guys are running all over. If you find every single one of the teleportation shrines, you unlock the Hunter class. I'm going to go through the Hunter class in more detail in another video. But yeah, it's definitely worth doing this as a group. Trying to do it solo could be pretty tough. You'll have also noticed that it said a Blood Moon is rising. Tonight is going to be a pretty tough challenge with the Hell Things attacking. They'll be much stronger and more numbers. A little adding of my contribution and hauls to the communal calls. Make sure you do this. It's good etiquette. You know, don't hold it all just so you can craft some fabulous looking shield. And the Bifrost was activated. This is super important in this game mode. If you defeat a lot of Jotun, you get a lot of golden horns, you need to escape via the Bifrost. If the tree just gets damaged and completely wiped out, you don't keep the golden horns as loot. So do make sure you escape, which you'll see at the end. The hell things were pretty tough, but nothing we couldn't really handle. You can see the tree's got plenty of life. These guys are pretty tanky. They do a hell of a lot of damage as well, so make sure you get out of this zone, otherwise it is going to damage you quite a bit. But not to worry, it was pretty much the end of the hell things. The blood moon wasn't that bad. After the blood moon, I do believe you get a day off at last, so you get one special night that you can just go ahead without getting attacked. I started day five looking at seeing if I can get some better items and gear and just seeing what else we needed. There definitely was a bit of a shortage of some of the end game or special items that you get from certain creatures. And there you go, hell things not appearing tonight. So as I was looking at this, we had another event pop up, the Prisoner of Dokulfar. You need to go to the location and pretty much rescue him breaking open his little cell and killing any of the enemies that are guarding him. These are events and so you do need the event fragments that you get from these as well as the quest fragments and you'll need boss fragments or, or giant fragments too to open up the, the gate to pretty much take on the final boss. I've yet to really use them properly much because I've just kept forgetting but don't forget to craft some ramps to get up to higher areas. You can avoid a lot of enemies sometimes and find some extra loot. So as I said, nothing happened because the hell things give us a night off. So day six, we started it off by taking on the underpass. This is how you have to get to some parts of the Smoky Highlands sometimes. You'll go through here, there's a bunch of loot, there's a lot of enemies, and there's sometimes usually big, massive trolls. For sure, really good for getting some extra decent, nice loot, but you have to be really careful of them trolls too. These guys are no joke. You can get up close, you can do a lot of melee damage, but this literal swing of his axe here, where it rains the red fire lightning, oh my god, it one da one shotted me, one downed me. Definitely take some friends when you go through this place so you can revive each other. Now, I'm not going to say they carried me through this part, but I'm not going to lie and say that I saved the day. Uh, big shout out to Def Paladin here for picking me up yet again. So finally started taking him on after not being too scared. You can see the little sway he does there doesn't do too much damage, especially when you're super close. In fact, it kind of hits just in front. It does need a little bit of work being done with some of these bigger mobs. The way they hit you, the hitboxes don't seem always that big a deal. Like you have to be really unlucky to get hit by one of them. But sometimes obviously when he does do that ground pound attack, yeah, it's going to take nearly all your health. And all three of us got downed here. Can we get an F in comments for all that souls that I'm about to lose? By the time I got back to my loot, the boys had taken care of the troll and we could get up all the rest of the loot, the mana elixirs and stuff like that, and move on through the underpass. Once through, we managed to activate another shrine and there was another bunch of NPC merchants that we could buy or sell some stuff through. And another troll. This one was a bit easier to take care of. we just done him a lot from range. This is definitely where you get them in out in an open area. It's a lot easier to take on large creatures if there's more of you, as one can kind of do a lot of the kiting and the other one can take him out from a distance. After that, it was a dash back to the encampment to defend against the hell things as day six drew to a close. And again, this wasn't too problematic taking care of these ones. 
no seven days to die here. The map is a sea of encampments and camps. Now them fires, I think they're pretty useless because you can't do anything, you can't repair weapons or buy anything or get anything at them, but they are actually more useful as the days go on. It's starting to get a bit colder if you don't notice. You will need to upgrade, get weapons or armors, I should say. That is gonna protect you a little bit more because the eternal Ragnarok is coming or whatever. And so it does mean that the area is gonna get cold. It's pretty subtle. I like the way it happens. You start seeing little snowflakes a little bit later on, but yeah, something to be warned of. Now we're talking about the big stuff, Glacier Peaks. The boys built a bridge over. This is what you need to do to repair the bridge so you can access one of the toughest zones. And you can see now the screen is going all frosty and cold and I'm losing a lot of health. This is pretty much what's gonna happen by the time you get to day 14, day 15. So maybe not just yet, but you might need to start investing in a little bit of the elixirs that keep you your warm while you're going through these cold areas. Obviously, unfrozen creatures or draugas, they're pretty tough to beat as well. But hopefully you'll be eyeing up or trying to get hold of the portal so you can teleport quickly back here. And while we were messing around with the cold uh, Draugas, a Jotun got sent back by Odin. So that meant we got some more rewards at the Bifrost. So as long as you exit correctly, you will get more out of it. Finally, my one heroic act. Our teammates were down, they were dead, they hadn't reached the portal to teleport, but I managed to get there, I got to the shrine and just about done it and saved the day. When you do do that, it activates the flames, it does keep you a little bit warm. So again, another little top tip. Dash back to home and start thinking about what else we need. We won't be going through this stage yet. Boys didn't really start doing it, I think, until like day 13, day 14. Here I'm just showing you on day seven, the quarries. These generate resources over time. So really important that you do this when you're solo as quickly as possible. I've been finding it pretty tough. I think by day five, I've been able to activate one of these on my own, but it is super important to get lots of these resources as quickly as you can. So make sure you do this solo. And with all of yours, it's pretty easy to go and get all the upgraded stuff you need for these. Obviously you've got the lumber yards, you've got the quarry, as well as you've got like a hunter's shack as well. And that was pretty much it for day seven, just another quick defense. Our tree of life is doing nice and well. You can see it's just over the 5,000 mark and the health things still aren't much of a problem. Now I'm starting to also get some better weapons and gear maybe. I've jumped up to level eight, fast approaching level nine. And I'm nearly at the max of points that I can put into my class. So this is what you're going to be doing on day eight, taking a look at the actual portals and what you need to find. So that's what you'd be doing, trying to go through the glacier peaks to find it, the lair, and this is what you need to put in. You've got the event fragments, which I had a load of. You need the quest ones from the notice board. Then you also need Jotun fragments from defeating the giants, 15 of them. And you also need the hideout fragments. I'll show you the hideout, but it's a bit different from the underpass. I think you can also buy some of these from some of the NPCs. So if you really are short, you might be able to trade some souls or some other items for them. I do think it is souls that you need to buy them with though. I went to the Smoky Highlands to see if I could get to the hideout and this is where I came into a massively OP werewolf. This guy absolutely obliterated me. I'm trying to find out a better way to get one of the classes unlocked where you have to take damage like a bunch of times within 10 seconds. It's like 25. Um, I thought this guy might do it because he's pretty quick, but no, you definitely need multiple enemies. I can't believe I didn't defeat him. He was so low, I was pretty gutted. And yeah, he took one chump out of me before I could get rescued. You son of a dog. But losing 101 souls is nothing compared to the amount of times during this session. Don't tell the boys that I lost thousands of souls. And this is the hideout. Now the boys had already cleared most of this as well. But pretty much you have to go down deep levels. There's levels that you go down, killing more enemies, killing more, getting more loot and stuff. So it is another bit of a challenge. And obviously the end result is to get some of them fragments. So I didn't really need to be in here anymore. And the blood moon was going to be rising that night. So it was definitely going to be another challenge. I had a story quest complete and we needed the fragments too, so make sure you're doing them. They will usually always have a fast travel point next to them as well, so don't worry about running to them and not being able to get back if you're low on resources or your weapons have took a lot of damage to your ability. It is a bit annoying that you get there and then have to go and kill 10 wolves or get 30 fur or find another item. I kind of wish that the quest would tell you exactly what you need to do by the time you get there. But yeah, that's one of the aspects to look out for. When you get there, they're going to ask you to do something. So we were having a little bit of fun trying to take out another massive troll. When the call came, it was time to go to go and defend home from that blood moon rising. A quick dash to the communal section. Make sure I'm dumping off any other resources that I've picked up, including the event fragments. 
and it was maybe time that I did get some more decent weapons and armor upgrades. I really hope they allow some way that we can just have a more of a breather or a bit more time. Maybe it's a potion we can use that gives you an extra 15 minutes. Just so at some point you can actually take a look at some of these weapons a little bit more in depth and really work out which one you want to work towards. But the hell things were here and it was time to actually defend for our lives with the tree only having around 5,500 health. Obviously you don't see it much here but our gates have always been destroyed but we have got the archery towers up there. The boys said that was maybe something to consider doing first and like I said making sure that you lift the gates when they're coming through. If you don't want them to destroy them it's definitely much better. But they do do the job. You can upgrade the gates as well so it'll be even harder to break through. But by the time the giants get to this stage yeah you kind of lost it so you'd never want the John to really get this close. Another heroic true act by picking up my teammates and I've got the challenge done for that and we survived another day day nine especially if you're a ranger class make sure you get some decent arrows this is one thing i hadn't been doing you can see a lot of us hadn't really been crafting more of the different types of elemental damage arrows and that's going to help a lot against lots of the enemies remember most of the enemies have some sort of elemental weakness so it's always handy to have something in your bag that you can utilize against them we're getting pretty much now ready for the raid so propping up on lots of health potions and other elixirs that you could hold Another top tip, don't bother upgrading the Tinkerer to level 5 as it only unlocks the level 5 items and they're literally two weapons that you also need Golden Horns to unlock. So unless you've got an abundance, it's maybe not necessarily as worth it. You do also need to craft the item beforehand. It's a system so it uses the next one below to craft the next upgrade for the weapon so you can't skip one. And just to show you a little bit of the archery towers, because we do have a bunch of resources. We were lucky, obviously, with the Blood Moon, it means no health things are going to come that night. So we've got a night off and just upgrading these guys to show you. You need cut stone, lots of the wooden boards and raw iron. It's a ton of resources getting out. So you've got to have them farms up and running. You can upgrade some of these as well up to level three. And that's what I did. We defeated three Jotun in this run and this was the Ice Giant. So yeah, I've seen a bit of comments talking about the fact that the Giants seem too easy, like you can get out of the way. Yes, as I said, some of the hitboxes and some of these big creatures is a bit broken or it just doesn't seem to register as much sometimes. But equally, it's still a huge challenge. I think the Giants are meant to be slow. Obviously, they're huge creatures. If they were super speedy or too hard to defeat, then it'd kind of be a bit boring um, just getting owned all the time. So these are kind of there to decide how you're going to defeat them, what time you're going to defeat them. That's the real key challenge here is working out exactly how you're going to defeat it and how close it is to other creatures. So sometimes, or most of the time, it's better to go out as early as possible and take these on, as long as you're not too underpowered and getting owned by other enemies as you go there. The big dark pool is actually a health pool, or I think it's caused by one of our teammates, it actually heals them. But you can see all of our team were getting down, so I don't think it's too easy, I don't think it's too hard to defeat them giants, I think it's just about right, said Papa Bear, or Goldilocks, or one of them. But to defeat him, we certainly did, and we got our rewards. The Guardian class unlocked. You have to defeat three Yotan in one world to unlock the Guardian class, and that was nice. I meant I could really play around with lots of classes. A quick dash back after we picked up the loot, and then a quick skip to see how well we was doing at the actual portal, and it was now day 10. Yeah, don't ever actually look at your map when you're in a dangerous area. Or you may go ahead and lose a thousand souls. RIP. Okay, the final reckoning. Here I was trying to get as many different or higher level weapons and armor pieces as possible. And my final contribution to the big infantry at the chest in the village. You can see the cold is proper creeping in now. The ground is getting snowy and icy and we're nearly ready to face off against the raid boss. But just to show you the six points that I didn't actually upgrade, or five I should say, you can see there's five that I wasn't able to get. I did get the more important ones though, like more elemental damage with the fire and plenty of uh, mana regen. So yeah, there's always going to be five skills you won't be able to actually unlock with each class. Okay boys, let's go. We've put all the portal pieces inside and it's time now to go into the lair. So look away now if you don't want spoilers, this will be the end of the video for you. But if you want to see what the raid boss is, then here we go. Go. I got the honor of sliding down first and we face a giant massive Fenra, obviously the wolf that destroys or kills Odin 
at the end of Ragnarok, supposedly. Uh, you have to put the signal in. I do believe, again, that's part of the shard, so you get it. And then he breaks open from his chains. Now, to be honest, he wasn't amazingly as hard as I thought. In fact, the guy said as well that he's pretty tame when it compares to some of the other challenges. It's still challenging, though, and we died a bunch of times for absolutely sure. You don't have to worry. It's not a limited time event. If you fail, you will get wiped. It doesn't just reset. He will still be running around the arena and you can just go back, pick up your loot and carry on fighting him. He's got four main areas of attack underneath his feet, so whenever he lands with all four like that, you need to be out of that zone. His tail does do damage attacks, but only certain specific swipes, not just when he's moving. And he's obviously got his bite that he'll do as well. So we were just picking everyone up or trying to, people that didn't have self-revive abilities on and trying to whittle away his 510,000 health pool. Now this attack at the front is pretty powerful as well, the two front ones, it's definitely a lot bigger. And then he also has another attack which is gonna bring all sorts of boulders up from the ground or falling down on us, one or two in big circles. Now while this was going on, we did have an issue. The village needs to be defended. Nothing stops, you still have to defend yourself from the health things or it's all gonna be game over. Luckily we had enough souls inside our pot got nearly 9,000 so we all pretty much stood here and took it on. I think maybe a couple of guys went back to the encampment and made sure that we didn't suffer too many issues. So yeah, he is absolutely tough and you've got to be on your game. Everyone's got to be utilising the right weapons and tools. The howl there does a huge amount of damage. You'll be lucky to escape it and I can see I only had 16 health. My heroic moment saving old uh, death paladin here. But it didn't last, I got caught just at the front and before I could get revived, he stamped on me, the little git. And then again, just the same old trying to wade on him, his tail is actually a good place to stand behind and attack, always trying to get behind him is a good move, as he kind of does do a lot of choreographed sort of front attacks. Now these are the circles of damage, they are rocks falling down, and yeah, if you get caught in that, it's game over. I did finally start getting used to the circles and making sure I was just dodging out of the way. You can see they're all pretty close together except for a couple on the outer reaches. Not 100% sure what kind of elemental damage is better for him. It looked like Dark wasn't doing much. It had little red arrows going down as well as lightning attacks from some of the guy's weapons. So it must be maybe fire or ice damage possibly. I'm going to go with fire damage might be the better way to go. And then my fat ass wasn't quick enough to move out of the way of the rocks. And of course, the dog did what any bad boy would do. He came over and finished the job off. But this gave me a chance to take a look at encampment. Just look how icy and cold it is now. You've got to have literally some sort of elixir or you're not going to last too long. The hell things were coming really hard, fast and deep. So many of them. This is day 11 now that we're approaching. We did manage to get through the day 10 and night. It's going to be incredibly tough finishing this off. Are we going to make it to day 15? It's the ultimate challenge. The moderator said it's pretty much the end end game content of making it through a whole session. It will get so cold that there's just nothing you can really do other than take your elixirs and then hopefully make your escape to the Bifrost. But we did just about manage to defend this final wave from the Hellfings and we got some more upgrades for the doors to stop that happening through getting through as well. By the time I got back it was day 12 and we were nearly there. One final few swings and Fenra was going to be taken care of. It was a good battle. I love the fact you still got to think about the settlement and make sure that some people are there. It does mean that sometimes you potentially might all miss out. So timing when you're exactly going to go for the boss fight is pretty important and making sure you've got plenty of days to do it. On average, it's going to take you maybe two days if there's enough of you like we are. But obviously, it does scale. So if there's less of you, it should have a reduced health pool too. A few more hits and we nearly got him. I was just using my bow just because I didn't want to uh, get up too close and risk missing the final part. And we finally took him down. And there we go, a saga quest finished. That is the ultimate aim of these sessions, not necessarily sticking around to the last few days. It is defeating this guy. So you can go earlier and as long as you defeat him, that's it. You're pretty much done. But leave it too late and you won't have enough time to really get back and do anything else. So day 12, we did try our best to get through to day 15 as there is obviously a character unlocked behind that too. You get five golden horns for defeating Fenra as well if you escape by the Bifrost and obviously lots of other little items to make. Lots of souls, a waypoint potion, lots of fangs and other little bits and bobs. See you later, doggo!
So with one final Blood Moon approaching, we made sure that we did have the best armors and weapons equipped. You can still see me rolling around in the most basic gear. I should have swapped my stuff around a little bit more to get some of them blue items. The invincibility potion's not bad. It will obviously give you invincibility for a little while, so definitely worth considering keeping. And then just one final push to see if we could upgrade any of the other defenses. So like I said, you can just leave after pretty much doing that, but there is an achievement from getting through to day 15, and we were so, so close. Taking care of the hell things here, making sure they're not going to break through or opening the gate so they don't damage it a little bit more. And now we have like the top healthing tier creatures coming along. The ones that split into two once you've defeated them once. The bombers that come down and explode to try and get the tree life. We did have a fair amount of souls though. I hadn't even deposited my thousand that I already had. I was nearly embarrassed to lose another thousand. But I managed to just get revived or picked up enough to go and put all my souls into the tree. And avoid looking like a chump. It's pretty crazy, it's pretty hectic at this moment as well. You can see my health is so, so low, and that might even be the cold that is doing a lot of damage too. But then we did it, we finally done it, and we broke through to day 13. At this time, I thought it was pretty easy, but nope, there was one final challenge that we didn't actually overcome. One more Yotan, which was fast approaching the dark, dark wench that she is. Uh, this was pretty tough. We just couldn't get her health down. She had a huge amount of health. We trying our best, wailing on her, wailing on her constantly. More than even the Fenra boss at 626,000 health. We hadn't started hitting it enough or we just weren't coordinated enough in all coming along. And she started pretty much wiping us all out. The cold was also killing us as well. Even the campfires that we'd come across weren't working anymore. It was that cold. This is where you need your elixirs to stop you freezing to death. And I just Batman to pick myself up before I started getting damaged once more. You can see we didn't even get her to half health. And she's literally so close to our village now. We had to run. We had to say, no, nope, this was it. This was the time we had to go. So goodbye, our little settlement. Day 13, so, so close to getting to them the last couple of days, but we did fail. We legged it to the Bifrost, which you have to do if you've got a lot of Golden Horns, you think you've earned a lot, make sure you get to this place so you can escape. And it'll tell you how much you get as reward, and that is it. That's the end of the session, done. I got another level up at level 6, which was nice. Obviously, I got carried a huge amount by these moderators. Although some of them weren't as big a level than me, they hadn't actually experienced some of this stuff as it was the 1.0 update, which they hadn't tried for a while, since they'd obviously not been doing it since the testing stage. But it was good. It was really great fun. Really nice bunch of moderators. So be nice if you're in the Discord. Don't be salty. And who knows, maybe they'll come and give you a hand if you need it in one of your games. I'm going to do my best and maybe I can organise a session where you lot can join me as well on PC at the moment, but I might pick it up on PS4 as well. And I hope you've enjoyed this little run through. Remember, it's going to be tough for you. There's season one of The Wolf. They will be changing it up every four months with a season refresh halfway through every two months. We'll be adding new challenges and maybe some other new modes and stuff like that as well. That is the saga mode complete. Now survival is my main focus, although I still need to work on some more characters, which you can only unlock in the saga mode. The Wolf Saga, Tribes of Midgard, done and dusted. Let me know what you think about the challenge of it, and I'll see you rat bags for more videos soon. Bye-bye.